Oh, he's coming out. He's coming out. I'm letting go of his tail. He must have won most of his fights. He doesn't have a lot of uh, scars on him. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. Adjustable for cant, and then these little end pieces are adjustable to cut. Come right up and under. Boy, that's a big one. He's gonna fall out. Whoa! Look at him go, look at him go. Going forward before you will hear and feel an audible and tactile. Hey guys, welcome back. This is the new LCS Air Arms SK-19 25 caliber semi-automatic air rifle. Today, I'm gonna take you hunting with it as well as give you a full review. Coming up. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. The LCS Air Arms SK-19 is assembled in North Carolina, America. It's semi-automatic, it's regulated, it's externally adjustable, and it's run in a Lothar Walther polygonal barrel. A short list sure to prick the ears of any avid air gunner. It measures 35 inches long and weighs in at 9 pounds 10 ounces to include a scope, mounts, and a bottle full of air. The warranty is 3 years. The SK is actually offered in two versions. The semi-automatic one I'm reviewing today and a version that's toggleable between semi-automatic and fully automatic. Between the two, the calibers you've got to choose from are 2.2, 2.5, and 3.0. And all three run through the same floating titanium magazine that's fixed to the SK-19's receiver. A repeating system, by the way, that hasn't failed me once in over a thousand shots of varying pellets, slugs, and weather conditions. Depending on which model you go with, the SK-19's prices span $2,100 to $2,300 and they're all available at Air Guns of Arizona. The LCS's engine is a powerful one. Out of the box, it ran at a hot 66 foot-pounds via pushing a 34 grain to a 936 foot per second average. The extreme spread and standard deviation graphed at 32 and 8 feet per second respectively. Usable shots were 58. At this velocity, I was experiencing significant pellet instability, so I went to work retuning down to the owner's manual's recommended 900 feet per second with a 34 grain. The SK's two external controls, regulator and hammerless valve system responded well. And after some time spent, spat me out two usable graphs. One biased towards a tighter ES for improved accuracy, and the other towards more usable shots for up close use. For the hunting scenes and accuracy tests to be shared in this video, I ran this one for 51 shots at 61 foot pounds. Average velocity held at the recommended 901, and the ES and SD were a lovely 21 and 6. The gun also takes advantage of an effective carbon fiber-esque shroud and moderator that's void of those air gunner important one half inch UNF threads. But a Daniafel adapter is available for an extra 40 bucks. Generous and rigid Picatinny real estate is provided upstairs and down, as are two easy to read color-coded manometers. The forward one being for remaining bottle pressure 
and the aft for current regulator pressure. Dual manual safeties, a new AR compatible pistol grip, a rubber butt pad, a removable 480cc 250 bar carbon fiber bottle, a large custom carrying case, and a lightweight dual stage non-adjustable trigger round out the package, which in the hands feels hefty and well built, a bit edgy but pleasantly narrow, and comes up quick, but those dual safeties can slow you down some. Shooting and maneuvering is pretty good, so long as you're okay with the weight, rolling brakes, and increased pellet dwell time, but all three are manageable and won't detract from performance with some practice. <laughs> He's gonna run, see how he's bobbing his head? I saw his tail come up. <laughs> I didn't see the impact though. <laughs> I can't see it, but I heard I, it. I put it right behind his shoulder because he was crawling into that hole. Yeah, there's huge holes down there and they all will disappear in there. Those were some big ones. Upside down iguana. Oh, you too, you too. <laughs> Those were some good ones. Those were really good. Hey, uh, now, is there nobody by that pole anymore? There were ones at the concrete pole to the left side. I don't think so. I think that was them. When they saw us coming, I feel like they started migrating off to the right. Okay, that might have been them. Nice shots, man. Perfect. Yeah. The SK-19 strikes again. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dragon down. <laughs> Still kicking a little. Want me to pick him up for you? Sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice shot, Jess. Hey. <laughs> Dang, there's another one up in up in these leaves. I'm listening. You hear it? Alright guys, now the trigger on the SK-19 is actually quite decent, especially for a semi-automatic. It's two-stage, it breaks it well under a pound and a half, it has a nice light resettable first stage, it comes up against a nice secure wall, and with a little bit of roll and creep, it'll let off for you. But what drove me a little bit batty were the dual safeties on the gun. Now down here in the firing position, I wasn't actually able to reach this safety with my thumb, and I got pretty decent sized hands, and I do shoot a lot of ARs, and I've never had that be a problem before. And this one in the back here, I just plain would forget about all the time when I was out there on the hunt. But the way to deactivate them is to just flip that one forward, come over here to the side of the gun, flip that one off, and then you're able to shoot. Now, like I said, that first stage take up is light, it's resettable, comes up against a good wall, and with a little bit of roll, it lets off for you. One pound, 6.6 .6 ounces. Now being a semi-automatic, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the trigger's ability to reset itself after the shot. 
Now after it lets off, there's a good little bit of travel going forward before you will hear and feel an audible and tactile click. Right there, that click lets me know I'm ready to go. You got to come back a little ways to come up against that second stage wall again. There it is. And there's the let off. One more time. There's the audible click. Back to the second stage wall. And boom. Not too shabby. I heard him rustling up in there. Get him. Get him, Jess. He's coming around. The oh, I got one looking at me right here. Can you see the eye? I'm going to come in right behind you. Yeah, go. So his eye is in the crack right there. Put it in his eye. Put it in his eye. We got to be three marks above. Like that. Oh. Oh, oh, we got him right coming now. down? Yeah, we got him in the eye. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that another one? Yeah, there's a second one right Good. there. Nice. And he's cutting across right here. It's infested. Two of them. He ran over the top of another one. See right here? Oh, he's spinning around the tree. <laughs> I see him. Come right up and under. Boy, oh, that's a big, big one. one. He's gonna fall out. Whoa! Look at him go. Look at him go. Yeah, you. I'm not even sure what's happening right now. Can you see him? <laughs> well, the wind's blowing away from you, so that ain't good. Yeah, I see it. are actually hitting the chain link fence. Yes, it happens. On the way down to the iguana. Yeah, iguana right there. That's a really good one. Oh, look at this one. Yeah. Look, he's got two tails. He's got two tails. Yeah, two tiny tails. Look, look at that. that. Little, little, little. This, by the way, guys, this is all their poop. You can't even walk on this without stepping in poop. No. Anywhere. Worse than birds. Worse than seagull poop. These must have been the three just that... Um, they were underneath. Yeah. They came back out. Mm -hmm. I think there's one more. I can hear it. This oh, box is getting heavy. It is. 50 pounds of iguanas in here. Ah, take a look at that. Refilling the SK's 480cc removable carbon fiber bottle is super easy. Hook up and slowly fill to no more than 250 bar. And then once again, when you reach 150 bar. When you're done, bleed the air between your fill source and the gun. 
and disconnect. That's all there is to it. He's beautiful. That's, That's funny. Cool. We got the littler guy. Got him, got him. He wasn't little, he wasn't little. We're going to go get him. Did you have to hold over for that? No, not, not too much. That's awesome. Holy moly. He's not asleep. You got it. No brain for you. Let's go look at it. Come on. Oh, yeah. Got a nice hole. Right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Just like Jessica Top. <laughs> <laughs> It's like being with the Steve Irwin of the Fort Lauderdale iguanas. That was a big lizard. I had him by the tail. You got him by the tail? I him by the tail right now. Oh golly, that's a big old son. Isn't he a big iguana? Yeah. yeah. I see his tail, but I'm his, all holding him by the tail. His body's like three feet in front of it. Don't tear yourself up, girl. It's just a dragon. We can get another one. I got that. Take a break. Grab his tail. Grab it. Please. I got Please it. Please pull that. Pull it. Pull. 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 Hang on. Guys, I apologize. I wasn't able to get the Crawford and Lipped KLS SK adjustable butt pad into my hands before I left for Miami, but it's a super cool piece and I feel like it'll be a value to a lot of you, so I wanted to share it with you. Essentially, it's an adjustable butt pad. It's all aluminum construction through here, through the backer. These little knobs here feel like a really tough um, rubber silicone type material, and it's quite adjustable. Now, there's three course positions for height where you can take this aluminum back pad and kind of raise it or lower it to your setting. The whole thing's adjustable for cant, and then these little end pieces are adjustable to kind of mold to the shape of your body or, uh, or shoulder and it's super cool how on this bottom one it's kind of narrower and tapered for down here and a little bit fatter up here in the in the in the pressure pocket where it interfaces with your shoulder and it's just a really nice piece to be able to get up warm and cozy to the gun and get comfortable to improve your shooting and these are available for about hundred and forty bucks so there you go the Crawford and Lipped KLS SK aluminum adjustable butt pad <sighs> Right, he's coming out. He's coming out. I'm letting go of his tail. Hang on. <laughs> I don't want to get. Oh my god, my arm's literally giving out. All right, I got his tail. Take a break. He's ain't going nowhere. Take a break. Take a break. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. Take a break. Hang on. I got his tail. He ain't going nowhere. You better have him good though, because if he spins around on me, I'm letting go of his tail. Hang on. You got him? No. All right. No, I don't. All right. Now I do. You got him? Yeah. All right. Dang. You are insane. Oh man. Y'all have no idea how tired my arms are. They're like shaking from giving out. I can't grab even a cup right now. You look like somebody just <laughs> dipped you in a big old bucket of dirt. I got him though. Did you buddy? <sighs> oh. oh my goodness gracious. I can't do anything. I've never had this happen before. Why did you go running after him like that? We have to get him. He can't get away. He can't get away. That is a big old lizard. He's exhausted. He's as tired as you are.
<laughs> the water ones are always fun. They're challenging, but if you miss, you can see where your shot went in the water, so I like shooting them when they're in the water. Also, they don't get away. The SK-19 is pretty quiet, and its OEM shroud and moderator do a pretty good job, especially for the 61 foot-pounds of energy that I've currently got this gun tuned to. Now, any noise that does come from the gun is emitted more from this area, directly into your ear and jawbone, than it is from here. Now, if you want to go after market on your moderator like I did to try to get a little bit more quiet out of the gun and to dial in the accuracy via tuning for harmonics, you can. You will need the LCS adapter, which is a one half inch UNF, and then a moderator of your choosing. This one here is a zero dB. You got him! What the? Oh, there's a one on the uh -huh. tree branch right there. Uh-huh. Wow. I don't see him. What the heck? There's another one right here? Yes. They're everywhere. They are. That is a little guy. You can see the holes they've been digging because we're just getting out of egg laying season. Oh. And there he is. Oh, that one's pretty. Left-handed. I think we pretty much cleaned that area up. I like it. For those of you that noticed, this was caused by this. So keep Banana Boat Sport Cool Zone sunblock away from anything that you value, including yourself. I'll be making the switch to Neutrogena. The LCS Air Arms SK-19 has been an easy gun to get along with and like. What I valued most about it was its unflappable semi-automatic mechanism, which ran flawlessly for me throughout my time with this gun. Learning to shoot it well took some practice. Due to its lock and extended dwell time, the rifle is quite hold sensitive. It's basically a giant revolver, with the pellet shooting out of the magazine and into the barrel. These things take time, so an exaggerated follow through and repetitive hold and approach become critical to hitting your target.
Its Lothar Walther polygonal barrel is among the best available, but mine was quite pellet fussy, even when using the JSB 34 grain variants that it was designed around, and when pushing them to the recommended 900 feet per second. The velocity the owner's manual recommends to keep the semi-automatic magazine cycling properly. I got the best accuracy out of mine by dialing the out-of-box speed of 936 down to 900, and by tuning barrel harmonics and frequency with an aftermarket moderator. And in the end, the results were pretty damn good. <laughs> <sighs> but no air gun is immune to a bad pellet. Well, that is all for today, guys. And special thanks to Air Guns of Arizona for sending me on this amazing hunt, as well as getting the SK-19, Crawford & Lipped KLS SK butt pad, MTC Optics Copperhead Scope, Sports Match Rings UK Scope Rings, and 0DB Moderator into my hands to review for you. You guys know the best way to thank them for that one. And special thanks to Jessica of Iguana Solutions for being such an amazing guide and film accomplice. I couldn't have done it without you, Jess. Now from here, y'all want to head on over to the Airgun Nation forum so that you can participate in the discussion thread on the SK-19. I'll leave you a link on how to get there in the description down below. So with that, I'm Steve Shally. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great week, everyone.